Hello everyone. A while ago, I made a video demonstrating how to draw a simple character using Critter, and rigging and animating it with Moho. I wanted to make it more accessible by recreating this process in Blender. During this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how we can draw our cutout characters, import them into Blender, and then, finally, how to rig and animate them in a scene. Here, you can see a side-by-side -side comparison between the previous animation achieved in Moho and the new Blender version. I found using Blender this way simple and effective. If you are new to animation, but love drawing, this technique is a great way to quickly get started. So for this video, we'll start with a brand new character, which in this case is a bipedal tiger wearing a dressing gown. Here, I'm drawing our character in Critter, which is free and open source, but feel free to use whatever drawing application you're comfortable with. We'll start off with a sketch, but once we have the design finalized, we'll draw each part of the character on a separate layer. Make sure you name your layers as you draw them. This helps when importing them into Blender. For example, with our tiger, we have head, body, arm one and two, tail, and the feet. Now that our character is drawn, we can delete the sketch and it's time to export our layers. If we're using Critter, we can do this by selecting Tools, Scripts, and Export Layers. We select the document that we want to export, choose where we want to put the image files under the Initial Directory panel, and check the Adjust Export Size to Layer Content box. Then, we select PNG, and finally press OK. Going to the folder where we save the images, we'll find each layer saved as a separate PNG image. We'll also want to save an image of the entire character as a reference for reconstructing it in Blender. Now, we open up Blender, and if the add-on Import Images as Planes isn't already enabled, we'll need to go to Edit Preferences, then under the Add-ons tab, we search for Import Images as Planes, then check the box and save the preferences. We can press Shift-A image, reference, and then we'll select the image of our entire character.
Once we turn the opacity down, we can import each layer of our character using the Import Images as Planes add-ons. Shift A to add, Image, Images as Planes. It's important to consider the import properties. For example, under the Material settings, the default Principled option will allow shadows to fall on the image and to be cast from it. The Shadeless option will make the image completely removed from the scene's lighting, and Emit will make the image seem to be removed from the lighting, but any shiny 3D objects in the scene will reflect the image. Other than that choice, we can leave these settings as default. I chose Principled, but any of these will work. Now, we just have to spend some time to scale, move, and in some cases, rotate each limb to align with our reference image. You can do this with G to move, R to rotate, and S to scale. Make sure to move each image closer and further away based on their original layer order. Once we've done that, we can delete the reference image and start rigging. For this character, there are two types of bones that we will use. The deformation bones, the ones that will affect the vertices of the image planes, and then the control bones. These are the ones that we will animate directly. For our character, the deformation bones include a torso bone, a head bone, two arm bones for each arm, one for each hand, one for each foot, four tail bones, and several bones for the lower section of the dressing gown. <laughs> the control bones will bind the image planes to the deformation bones. We'll accomplish this by first adding several subdivisions to each mesh. We can do this with the use of loop cuts, control R, to add more resolution to the mesh. To attach the images to the bones, we'll need to tell the mesh which bones should control which vertices of the mesh. We can do this by selecting an image mesh, add an armature modifier under the modifiers tab. This will allow us to associate the bones to the vertex groups that we are about to create. Remember to select the rig under the object property. Under the object data panel, this is the one with the green triangle. We can add vertex groups by pressing the plus button. These are groups of vertices that will be controlled by a bone with the same name as the group. We'll create one vertex group for each bone that will affect the selected mesh. As we just mentioned, for this to work, it's important to match the name of the vertex group to the name of the bone. Then we just assign the corresponding vertices to each vertex group. We can do this by entering edit mode, press tab, select the vertices that you wish to assign, click the vertex group that you want to attach them to, and press the assign button.
Now it's time to add the control bones. These include a duplicate of the head, the arm and hand bones, the feet, as well as the lower gown bones at the sides. We'll also add shoulder bones to move the arm around. A bone at the top of the torso deformation bone to stretch and squash the character's body. Make sure to name the control bones with the prefix CTRL. Just a reminder that in edit mode, we can duplicate bones by pressing Shift D and add bones with Shift A. For organization's sake, we can move the control bones onto a new armature layer by selecting the bones, pressing M, then selecting the second square in the pop-up menu. To switch between these layers, we can find them under the object data panel of the armature. This is the green stick figure. Now, we'll add all the bone constraints that we require. Bone constraints, found under the Bone Constraints tab, are like the modifiers, but for bones. They allow us to make bones behave in a certain way, automatically, based on other bones and objects. Most importantly, in order to make our control bones actually affect the deformation bones, we add a copy transform constraint to each of the deformation bones. This means that when you move, rotate, or scale the control bone, the deformation bone will copy this action. There are three exceptions to this, the deformation torso bone and the two middle lower gown bones, as these don't have direct control bones. Instead, we add a stretch to constraint to the torso bone, targeting the stretch control. This means that as the control bone moves, the torso deformation bone will stretch from its origin to the base of the stretch control bone. For each of the lower gown bones, we add two copy rotation constraints, each with a strength of 0.5. One targets the left deformation lower gown bone, and the other the right. This means that when the left and right lower gown bones rotate, the middle ones add some extra detail to the form of the dressing gown without having to animate it manually. We add a copy location constraint to the upper arm control bones that target their respective shoulder bones. This is so that they will move with the shoulder, but not rotate with them, instead rotating with their parent, the torso stretch bone. We also add a copy rotation constraint to each of the tail bones, referencing the previous tail bone. This means we can rotate the base of the tail and the whole tail curves. Here I'm adding some custom shapes to the bones just to make them more usable. There's a link in the description for how you can do this yourself. <laughs>
leg is finished, but we can still add some more features. For example, although we're using images, this doesn't stop us from being able to create a simple head turn. To do this, we add a shape key on the head mesh. Shape keys are different sets of positions of vertices that can be interpolated between with the use of a slider. To do this, we select the face mesh, then under the object data tab, the green triangle, you'll see the shape keys panel beneath the vertex groups. But this time, when we press the plus button, a basis key is created. This is the default position of the mesh. If we press the plus again, it will create our first shape key. With this selected, we can enter edit mode, change the arrangement of vertices, then in object mode, we can morph between the default position and the new shape key by moving the slider under the shape key panel. For our head turn, we'll create two shape keys, three including the basis, and we'll form the look left pose and the look right pose. We could animate these sliders manually, but for ease of use, we can attach them to some new control bones. These bones will include the main control, which will move left and right, as well as a base control, which will be used to limit the distance of the main control, while also being used to move the control around the screen. We can apply a limit distance constraint on the main control that targets the base. This means that we are unable to move the bone more than a specified distance from the base. I chose 0.3 meters. Also, under the N panel, I locked the Z and Y location of the bone, so it can only move left and right. To make the bone affect the slider, we can right click on the shape key slider and select add driver. Drivers allow us to automatically set one property based on the values of other properties. In the menu that pops up, look down to the variable panel. We select the armature object and the relevant control bone. Then, we'll select the local X location of the bone to affect the slider. Moving up to the expression panel, the current equation is var plus zero. This means to move the slider to a value of one, the bone's local X position must be one as well. But because our control can move only a maximum of 0.3 meters, we need to change the equation to var divided by 0.3. Or, for the slider that needs the bone to move in the negative direction, set it to negative var divided by 0.3. We then do the same for the body turn, and we're done. We're ready to animate. I planned an animation of our character jumping over rocks and generally displaying different forms of athletics. And I wanted to draw the scene using grease pencil. However, I had some issues with layer ordering and anti-aliasing where the image planes and the grease pencil objects overlapped. So, as a workaround, I decided to export each grease pencil object as a PNG then re-import them using the Import Images as Planes add-on. I'll let you enjoy the time-lapse of the animation of our character. I decided to create the grass with a 3D mesh, which combined with the image
Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Or if you just want to share what you've created, you can email me or better yet, leave a link down in the comments. Thanks again and I'll see you later.